This is a high pressure sensor off of a 2008 Audi A3. You can see down in there all the oil. Uh, surprisingly, it blew through the pins. Really bad design and manufacturing would mean the air leaks from the place where no salt water ever got because it's sealed inside where the terminals are. Uh, engineers would have an excuse if this aluminum gave way from you know corrosive environments. But we'll take a look because that's auto. Soapy water in where the terminals are because I want to show, as you can see, all the refrigerant went through. You know, high pressure sensors, it's about a hundred year old design. But leave it to a German car company to screw it up. I've never seen the refrigerant come through where the terminals are with an over molded pin. It's supposed to be sealed. I mean, it's hundred years of proven engineering here. But this in the high pressure sensor, you use a crow's foot on a really long extension. It's an 18 millimeter crow's foot. Got our trusty vacuum pump hooked up. All we had to do was replace the sensor. That was the only thing that leaked. 30 inches. So we're pretty close to being ready to charge. So we're going to use our uh, black light here. And you can see when the sensor blew, the dye and oil is everywhere. So we lost a lot of oil because it was more of an abruption. It didn't leak out slowly. It blew and went everywhere. So we got to put a lot of oil back in the system. You can almost see down there on the pan of the engine. You almost visibly see one ounce of refrigerant oil down there. So we're going to pop this one with at least two, two and a half ounces, if not more, of oil. You can also see under the hood. The fans are blowing oil all over the place, so we definitely at least have two ounces to inject, if not more. It's probably worth about three quarters of an ounce of refrigerant oil just right there. We're definitely going to add about probably three ounces to this system. More refrigerant oil. I mean, this stuff was going everywhere. Go to weigh your cans. Make sure you have the adapter on so you get your starting weights correct. Record them for both cans so you can charge it by weight. So because the system, uh, I don't have one of these pump machines and the system won't take any more of this can, I'm going to use a propane torch and just hit it a little bit to get it warm. If you get it too hot, you'll blow the can up. But if you just get it a little warm, it doesn't have to be burning hot. And then uh, it'll expand and push all the refrigerant down into the system. So this can, it's hot, but it's, you know, not going to burn your fingers. So that's where you want to be. Too hot and it blows up the can in your hand. But there it is. We haven't even turned the car on and we've got the full can in there now because we heated it and it pushed the refrigerant in. Two now weighs 7.2 ounces ending. So we got another can. We'll figure out how much one we got to put in there based on total system capacity. Two ounces in the system. We are going to have the vehicle running and then we're going to add charge. But in order to get such a tiny measurement correctly, we tape the hose because just the weight of the hose, if you move your gauges or anything, affect your measurement by quite a few ounces. So this keeps our hose in the fixed position to get an accurate small measurement. So after trying to command on a compressor through a laptop computer program he has, the new pressure sensor uh, is getting flagged for a short to ground. So we try to ohm it out. These two, the old and the new, do measure differently. Uh, he's gonna probably get a new one from a dealer and we're now gonna try to put 12 volts straight to the regulator on the compressor to try to kick the compressor on so we can get the rest of the refrigerant in the low side. Putting 12 volts straight to this connector right here, or that uh, valve. In test leads, you use home electrical wiring, you stick a pin in the middle, and now you got yourself a perfect female socket to put onto the connector to jumper it out. So as you can see, the insulator, it works pretty nice when you have two pins close together using home wiring. And then we'll use jumper cables to connect the ends of the battery. And then uh, when I come down here, I just gotta hook up this ground to the jumper cable. Ground's connected. The compressor's been commanded on. Those sides dropping, we're getting a few hundred on that. So we're gonna watch this gauge because our high pressure sensor is uh, new and broken. The system's under charge, so we shouldn't get too bad, but uh, we're going to continue charging as the usual AC system to get to the right weight, now that we jumper it out that valve. As you can see, we're holding it with tape, 
Connect the uh, turret to valve, all right? Then you got to monitor your high side while you're doing this manually, and then you got to cut it out by yourself. I'm doing it around 250 psi. The little box fan I got is not going to push a lot of sub cooling, so you, eventually it's going to creep up. The low side's not connected right now, as you can see, because we just got done injecting oil. But all right, we're at about 250. You want to disconnect? And then the pressure will start dropping when you disconnect the wire. And that's how you override these stupid variable compressors so that you can fill them with oil and refrigerant without special tools and computers and whatever else. So the computer won't allow us to uh, turn the fan on because it's complaining a bunch of, about a bunch of things. And uh, he's over there running the laptop. This car complains more than the German engineers that designed it. Alright, so we're going to we did rock, paper, scissors for two ounces. So we're going to fill this guy up with two ounces. This thing's going to have to be purged. So I'm going to undo this fitting here. I'm going to put some oil in this guy. this tube and start to twist this in to purge that guy. Okay, well I'll start coming out the top. So then we just take them and quickly put them together. Let me go over to the vehicle. And we'll just put a, so you can see how it lines, and then you just start twisting it. We'll put only about a quarter ounce in, and then we'll start it up, run the compressor, and then slowly keep adding the rest in. Say it's not uncommon to buy new ones that are not functioning correctly when you buy the off brands. It's going to go back to the dealer, get a new one, and then now that the system's uh, fully charged with refrigerant and oil, all he's going to do is just screw a new one on because these are just Schrader uh, valves so they automatically refrigerant shuts off when you unscrew it. So it's kind of like putting a tire cap on.